Hi everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today is a little bit different. I'm going to take you through a structured solo practice. This is something that me and my brothers and sister would typically do throughout a week, maybe two or three times. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this little video. So first drill of the session, I normally start with some like volley exercises. Here I'm just trying to work on getting my reaction time quicker, uh, seeing the ball a bit earlier and just speeding up the hands a little bit. These exercises are so important for that, for those reaction type shots in the game where players hit the ball down the middle or quick as your racket and you've got to have quick fast racket prep to be able to adjust to it. And then I like to move on to figure of eight volleys. This is actually my favourite volley drill. I do this normally every single time I step on a court. It's a great way to get the ball warm and again you're trying to hit a certain area on the front wall each time so you've got to be consistent with where you're hitting it and then getting your racket back each time quick enough for the next shot. So it works on your racket preparation, your hand-eye coordination and your speed. So now we move on to the back of the court. This is where I tend to start the rest of the solo practice. Uh, we're starting with forehand drives here. It's up to you how long you can spend on this. You can spend up to between two minutes and even 10 minutes. Depends how uh, focused you can stay in this kind of drill. Something I really like to focus on when I'm doing my drives is mixing up the heights on the front wall. So as you can see here, I'm trying to lift a few up and then I might attack one a little bit lower depending on how good uh, quality the previous shot was. So think about getting your racket back early, bending your knees, taking your space, and then choosing the right width or height on the front wall to hit that drive so it makes sure it goes nice and deep in the court. I think a lot of times people are using the wrong heights and then the ball always ends up landing short or they overhit it way too much. So spend a lot of time on here practicing keeping the ball super straight and tight, get it clean against that side wall so you build your confidence up. Once you've finished off the forehand side, I like to always come on to the backhand and again spend a similar amount of time to the forehand. Unless you think your backhand needs a bit of extra work, then spend some more time on it, or if it's less, then obviously adapt it to whatever you need. Uh, this is a little bit of a different angle here. As you can see, look at the point of contact I'm making. It's just in line with my stomach line off the back wall, so that helps me to keep the ball nice and straight and allow consistency in my drives. Again, look, look at the racket preparation. It's always back, up, and behind the ball, so I've got options in my swing. Now we're moving on to some variations at the back of the court. So on the forehand side here, we're doing drives with a straight drop option. I tend to do three or four drives at one time and then I'll put in the straight drop. Some of the focus points here are having the same swing preparation for both your drive and drop so that the shots look the same and that your opponent doesn't know what you're going to do with the ball. If you look at this example here, you can see my racket preparation is in the same position for the drive as it would be for the drop here. So practice that. Now we're moving on to drives with a cross court. So here you're looking to have three or four straight drives and then add in the cross court. And then you're trying to practice straightening up that drive from the other side. On these cross courts, think about using different heights and paces. So you might want to chuck in a cross court lob which goes over your opponent, hits the side wall and lands in the back corner, or use the cross court kill that lands flat and low, or like a medium pace cross court where it hits the side wall behind the service box. This way you'll have some good cross courts ready for when you play your next games. Now we're moving on to drives with a boast. So here you're hitting three quarter drives to yourself, which means you're not letting the ball touch the back wall taking the ball early again working on quick racket preparation for each shot and then you're going to hit like a two wall boast here you're aiming for the boast to hit the side wall and then the front wall just in line with the middle line uh, so that the ball doesn't catch the third wall once you've hit the boast again try and have a similar swing for your drive and your boast so you're trying to pair them up to look the same so when it comes to a game you, they're not sure what you're going to do now we move from the back of the court to the middle of the court. So this one's just fast volleys to yourself on the short line. Repeat this on both sides, both forehand and backhand, and think about quick, sharp racket prep with a nice short backswing. 
Now I'd like to add in some variations on the volley. So in this drill it's volley drives with a volley deep option or a volley kill option. So here make sure your racket prep is very quick and up early so you can execute both of those shots from the same position. Think about hitting steep down on the ball for the kill. So switch back to the forehand now and we're going to do forehand volleys with a volley drop option. Again mix up the the speed you hit your volleys at and where you hit it on the wall so that you might hit some quite high, some quite fast or some close to your body so you're used to playing these drop shots from different positions and you can consistently hit the ball front wall running into the floor to side wall. Once you've completed both sides on the volley drop option there we're then going to go into a bit of a freestyle volley from around the middle of the court. This one's really fun and something you can play around with with different angles, different heights and speeds. Go for some cross court nicks, little cross volley drops, straight drops, high, low, whatever, mix it up. Here you're just trying to get used to playing the ball off different angles and take it in short with good quality time and time again. Here's an extra little drill you guys can try. I thought I'd add it in for you as it's one of my favourites currently. It's a cross court volley feed and you're stepping across diagonally onto the ball and taking the ball just out in front of you. Think about getting your racket head out in front and your movement in line with a short line so you're taking the ball early. And then the final point here is to think about hitting the volley drops hits the front wall, floor and then runs away into the side wall so that in a game the ball is always running away from your opponent. Next up, cross court nicks. What would a solo practice be without some uh, nick practice? So here just, I'm actually hitting these ones behind the service box line because sometimes in a game, ball can come quite high and deep and you might have the angle to hit onto. So practice these from this position. A lot of people practice it too far in front. It's not that realistic. So hit it quite deep into the court. Mix up the height of the feed. So you're used to hitting from different heights and angles on the ball. And then on this one, make sure you follow through down and across the ball to drag it towards the nick each time. Now we've completed the middle of the court, we can then come to the front where we're taking the ball in short a lot more. So here we're just practicing straight drops off a straight feed. Think about having a nice open face racket. You're trying to put a lot of cut, cut and bite onto the ball so that it stays nice and short. As soon as it hits the wall, it then cuts back down. Mix up those uh, feeds again because you only be playing these shots from different angles. Nice follow through towards the target as well. Again, I like to spend five minutes each side doing these ones. And I highly recommend using a red dot ball for your drop shot practice. Because it's a little bit unrealistic using a double dot after about a minute or two. Because the ball gets really cold. So this is time to change the ball to a red dot or a single dot in your solos. For the drop shot practice and the front area. So that you're actually playing a ball off a bouncy ball. It's really important. Once you've finished playing those drop shots off a straight feed, where you're running it into front wall, floor, side wall, we're now going to hit the drops off a boast. So here you're actually aiming to hit the nick and get the ball to roll. You've got the angle here uh, to do so, so make sure again you get your racket up early ready. You're cutting that ball in with a nice open face racket. Sometimes hit the boast faster, slower, mix it up so there's lots of variation in it again. And get low to the ball as well. So this drill concludes the solo practice session. This session again can last anywhere between 20 minutes and over an hour. It's up to you how long you spend on each area of the court or each shot. Some of you may want to practice your forehand drops a little bit longer, so spend an extra few minutes doing that. If it's your drives, then spend more time on your drives. Nothing beats practicing as much as possible. Spending time on your court is how you figure things out for yourself. And then always at the end, you've got to have some fun, go and try some trick shots. I've got plenty on my Instagram and YouTube channel, so if you want to see more of these, go and check it out and yeah, enjoy. So that's the end of the solo. I hope you enjoyed watching that. That's a typical kind of session of what I've get up to. I start at the back of the corners, move up into the middle of the court and into the front. Uh, yeah, give these exercises a try, play around with it, be experimental. That's the way you improve, try training with different angles, heights, paces, whatever. That's how you improve, and yeah, hope you enjoy it.